Hey, welcome back to Getting It Done North of 7. My name is Roland. It's really cold again this morning. It's February 1st. I just loaded up this fireplace here with some wood. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how I built my firewood shelter, my firewood, my wood shelter. And uh, I'm going to show you the dimensions, what I did to build it. I'm going to show you everything from top to bottom so that you can build your own wood shelter or firewood shelter outside here at the wood shelter or the wood shed whatever you want to call it I'm going to show you guys how I built this and give you an idea how I built it now this is mine this is my ideas it's how we built it it's how we like it it works for us you may want to do something different that's up to you but I'll give you a basis to start with because when I before I built this I wasn't too sure what I was going to do and I looked around online I looked around on Pinterest and I found a YouTube channel where a guy made his own something like this, but he built the right size that I like to have, a big one. So I kind of went by the basis of his plans and went with that. So I'm gonna share with you how I built our woodshed so that maybe it'll help you build one for your place because it really comes in handy. This thing holds a lot of wood, a lot of wood. And I still have room on the right side here I'm still going to be loading more than that. I'm going to be getting a shipment of logs here shortly and I'll be cutting and splitting that and piling it into this wood shelter. So like I said, when I built this wood shelter, I wanted it to be big. So length is 25 feet and then depth, I guess you would call it, is 10 feet. The front posts, the front posts are eight feet tall and the back ones are six feet tall. We got three in the front, three in the back. For the posts, I just use cedar trees that on our property. Down in behind our house, I got some there. And then I stripped them, cut them to length. And that's what we're using for posts. Now you could use four by four posts, that would work great. I didn't put them in the ground. I have them sitting on cement blocks. That's just what I chose to do. I didn't want to, I don't have to dig down and secure my posts in the ground, make it sturdy and everything. This thing is heavy the way it's built, because I used a lot of rough lumber all around, as you can see. That was a cheaper way to go again, and it looks cool, right? It looks older, rustic. But like I said, it doesn't have to be there forever. It's just sitting on cement blocks, and that works out good for us. So I got six cement blocks. Now for the roof, I used metal roof. I had a whole bunch of leftover metal roof from when I did our garage and our house, and then I found some extra ones for free. So really, it didn't cost me anything to put a roof on the, on the wood shelter. But even if you had to buy metal for your roof, there's not a lot of metal there. It wouldn't cost a lot. And you don't have to buy expensive painted metal even. Like here, I just back onto woods anyway. So you could get away with just a normal tin looking roof, I guess you would call it. You know, they rust after a while. You can get away with that. Now for the floor, I use skids. Now there's a guy over here not too far from me who had a whole pile of them. So I just went and knocked on his door, talked to him. And I bought a bunch of skids off of him. So they're really the heavy duty hardwood skids and they're fairly big. So I measured out what they were and figured out what I needed, bought the amount and it worked out perfect for us. And I think we have six skids on each side. Now, I don't know why, but my original plan was, was to leave a gap in the middle, but I thought, what's the point? We can get more wood in there, as much wood as possible. So I put rough lumber from top to bottom there, a whole bunch of them at the end of each row. So the rows are leaning on the rough lumber. It stabilizes the ends. At the end, I just crisscrossed my logs, my firewood, so they wouldn't fall that way. But there is sides on the side of the, the wood shelter anyway. I didn't pay attention to how many bush cords I put in. But I got a feeling there's, there has to be at least four bush cords, maybe three bush cords on the left side. And so the other side would hold the same. So that holds a lot of wood. Now, as you can see, I put the rough lumber all around the sides. I left spaces here so lots of air and sun gets through. Along the back is all the same on the other side. Or when I ordered the rough cut lumber, I knew my measurements. So I, I measured exactly, they come in all different lengths. When you order rough cut lumber, at least from where I did anyway, they, they will cut them pretty much to any length you want. So I didn't have any waste after Harley, any waste at all. It was really good. Now, one thing is for sure, when you're building your wood shelter, you wanna use leg bolts and all the, the major parts of your, the major framing of your wood shelter. You wanna use leg bolts for extra strength. 
also because, you know, if we get a lot of snow, this roof is going to hold a lot of snow on top unless I rake it off. So it's going to be able to hold the weight. It's not going to cr crush down on me. Now also another cool thing too is now I have a big garden right here and we're going to expand on our garden, make it double the size. So I'm going to run a trough here and I'll direct water into one of those big tanks, you know, those big square tanks with the caging. I may do two tanks. I don't know yet but for sure one, and I'll be able to hide it in here behind the wood shelter and all the rainwater will be funneled down into the tank, which is gonna be really awesome for our gardens. And now the last thing you gotta to remember to do is put bracing too. So like we have braces here, I have braces there in every corner I have braces. I have one going from here to the back, braces all over just to keep it sturdy and solid. So you're not, it doesn't have any room to wiggle and move around on you, you don't want that. So if you're thinking you need a big wood shelter for the amount of firewood you need to store and dry, because you do need a big one. There's no use building half this size. It really won't do you any good. You, you want dr good dry wood. 10 by 25 is plenty for us. We burn a lot of wood. We burn wood all winter long. And we're in Canada, so we have a long heating season. So I hope this helps you and gives you some idea in case you don't really know where to start on how to build your wood shelter for your firewood. And you know what, I, what I'll do is I'll put a diagram of our size and all the measurements and everything for this wood shelter. I'll put it on our community tab on our homepage our, our YouTube, of our YouTube channel. And you'll be able to find the so-called blueprint for this wood shelter there. I'll draw one up really quick. I do have one, I just wanna make sure it's correct. I'll put it up there for you. So if you enjoyed this video about our wood shelter and how we built it and the materials we used, Go ahead, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next video.